Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining this conversation about Costa Brava, Lebanon. My name is Yasmina Tawil. I am the Director of Film Programming at the Arab Film and Media Institute, which is the first organization of its kind outside of the Arab world that's dedicated to building a unique ecosystem to find, nurture, and develop Arab films and media projects. Rebranded from the Arab Film Festival in 2017, uh, the, the plan is to fulfill uh, excuse me, after rebranding from the Arab Film Festival in 2017 to fulfill uh, a broader mandate to empower local Arab talent to tell their community stories in their own voices through film education, mentorship, and new media, AFMI's mission is to enhance public understanding of Arab culture and provide insight into the beauty, complexity, and diversity intrinsic to the Arab world. Uh, we host a film festival to this day every fall. You can learn more about it at arabfilminstitute.org. Um, today, joining me, I have uh, some of the cast and crew of Costa Brava, Lebanon. Uh, I have director, writer and director Munya Akel. Hi, Munya. It's nice to see you Hi. again. Yeah. And... <laughs> Uh, we also have our two stars, Salah Bakri and Nadine Labaki. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me. Uh, it is an immense honor to be sitting with three incredibly talented uh, folks from the from the Arab film world. Um, just like I'm actually almost speechless. <laughs> so thank you for taking the time today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Um, and, and in particular, I'm so excited to speak about this film, uh, Costa Brava Lebanon is, is beautiful and I'm so happy that it is getting a release here in the United States and um, that the story is finding uh, an audience all over the world. Um, starting with Munya, I would love to ask what the genesis of the film was, uh, where did the idea for this story come from? And the idea of the story came from two places. I think one of them is that my access to, to, to the world was through my family. And so studying how my family reacted to situations was why my way of understanding human psychology. The second thing was my relationship to my country and, and the, the love and the hate and toxicity in it. And those two came together uh, with this plot that, put those two in the same space, basically. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a story that uh, really resonates with a lot, a lot of people, but in particular, a lot of Lebanese uh, people. Um, we've been seeing even, even second generation, first, second generation, you know, and the diaspora outside. Um, yeah, you've created a story that really connects uh, with everyone. Um, Nadine Salah, how did you get involved in this production? Um, sh should I start? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, I've, I've known uh, Munya, of course, for, for a while. Uh, we, we were not very close to each other, but we, we knew each other. And uh, when uh, we met and we talked about uh, the script and Munya was telling me about the story, um, I felt uh, I felt a very uh, quick connection to the character of Suraya, um, uh, you know, living in a place like Lebanon with everything that's been happening and the, everything that's been going on here, and um, this uh, this idea that or, or this 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 uh, way of of being torn between. Um, taking maybe the right decision sometimes to move away from Beirut and move away from danger, move away from whatever the danger is, whether it's pollution or whether it's uh, um, the political situation or um, the ecological situation, no matter what the problem is, uh, Suraya was, uh, I felt this connection because, I, you know, I'm also torn between um, the need to stay uh, uh, in the city to be part of what's happening and the need also to uh, be more isolated maybe sometimes and uh, and be closer to nature, live, live closer to nature, 
um, and and find this this is more sustainable and self self sufficient way of of of, of living. Uh, and I think it's a you know it's a, it's becoming a, a universal question whether to uh, how do we how do we find the right balance? How do we what is the right solution? Is there uh, is there a right solution? So I felt mm-hmm. this connection very quickly to Soraya, and and I also you know felt the connection also to Munya and and her way of seeing this film. I I knew that you know she knows it very well. She knows why she's making this film, which is very important for me. Uh, is, this is the most important thing for me, I think, is the why. And I think Munya knew very well why she was, she's making this film. And this attracted me to the, to the film and wanting to work with, with Munya. That's so lovely. And I, I know you two have been connected sort of by chance for even longer. I find that such a sweet story if you want to tell it, Munya. Yes. I, when they asked me, like, because I was telling them, Nadine, how our energy started colliding way before we met, because Khaled, uh, your husband's music studio, is right below my childhood bedroom. So, yeah. you know, we were in each other's lives even before we met. Yeah, I used to, I used to see Munya very briefly, you know, sometimes standing on the window, and we used to have, you know, small chats and... Uh, Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think I think there was this this connection to this sort of atmosphere and universe of music and cinema um, mm-hmm. for a very long time before we yeah. really met. I love that story. I think it's so sweet and so special. Uh, and what about you, Salah? How did you end up in in this project as well? I met Munia on a festival somewhere I think in Dubai or something yeah. and uh, that's where it started I saw her uh, short film there and that's where the hour started and then she just me this beautiful script that, that was like four or five years, years before the shoot mm-hmm. and then we met again in Paris and then I she asked me to participate in this workshop in Sundance, developing, uh, working on, on uh, directing. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and I agreed, and then I went to Sundance, I traveled to Sundance to work with her on, the, on this beautiful workshop. And we've been there about three beautiful, amazing weeks, or two weeks, I don't remember. But it was great and beautiful. and. The, there where uh, I met her as a director first time was in, in Sundance. She, she was like practicing her, uh, her uh, beloved job. And I, I really appreciated her as a director working with her. Uh, the start was there in Sundance. And then, and then after, after a year, I think, we, we started the shoot in Lebanon. I love the script. And uh, right away when I read it, I, yeah, yeah, of course. And I was <laughs> traveled to Sundance to do that. And then came to Lebanon and made it. I like that everyone has visitors. <laughs> Are you able to hear him well, Yasmina? Yeah. Uh, yeah, on this end, you, it sounds actually quite clear. Oh, wow. So maybe yeah. I'm the problem. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm staying here in the village, and, and I have uh, my, my friends here uh, in the village. You know, they come and they say hello, and they invite me to coffee, and they, you know, it's just normal. Here. So, yeah. So yeah, that's that's how that's how uh, things start. I, I love the script very much. And I thought it, it, it talks to me. It talks to my to to life. The garbage in my life is is uh, is there in, in here in Palestine. The political mm-hmm. situation is a big garbage. And yes, I do feel like Nadine that I want to flee from here. I want to run away from this place. But there is something that keeps there's kind of something that keeps me here and this you know i'm teared between these these two 
to uh, decisions or decision that that or you know something that uh, occupy me all the time leaving staying staying leaving uh, like a war inside me and and with the with the kid now i have like two years and a half kid and with the kid it, it become much more uh, much more um, urgent for me this, this question of this decision to do it or not to do it leave this country or not so it's it's in a way it, it resonates uh, to me a lot and it, it, it uh, i believed in it i just loved the script and believed in it and khaled is somebody uh, khaled was his name Wali. No. Wali. you're in too many movies it's no. <laughs> i am offended <laughs> yeah, I've been here like 45 years. I didn't leave the country with all the mm -hmm. the, uh, the intensity of of this place. I, I I didn't go, and I could. I could. I mean, most of my work is abroad, and I could mm -hmm. work. I could just leave this, and I left, left. And now I ask myself, why did I stay here? And I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer. Just something. Yeah, it is um, a question. Uh, yeah, too many, too many of us uh, from this region and even in other places in the world have to to ponder. Um, but something that I see in the film, um, and that um, is is that despite all of this, there is there is a love um, of the place in this film, it's Lebanon, of course, but for, of, of your homeland and of wanting to make things better, even um, when you feel like, uh, when you feel like it's so out of your control. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't really have a question at the end of that. It's mostly just an observation. Um, but I, I love that, that despite, you know, all the critiques in the film, it's clear that, that there is love there. Um, of course, and yeah. and Walid is, I mean, Walid is driven by fear because he's so in love with this place, and this place has broken his heart so many times. Mm -hmm. And actually, Saleh is the first person I I wrote the script for because when I met him and we had this strong connection at, in this festival, mm -hmm. I was starting to write Costa Brava, and the first description of the character of Walid was deep blue eyes, and so for a year I was writing. Uh, Costa Brava with Saleh as Walid and I didn't tell Saleh it's only later that I told him but I unconsciously used some of his expressions his way of speaking some of the stories he had told me about himself so and that's what what happened later when I met Nadine is that suddenly you encounter those actors and you start putting them in the character and it really becomes a nice uh, marriage of personalities and 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 we start building the story together. And so just so the character of Saleh is in love with Beirut more than anyone in the film. And, and that's why he's in so much pain. Yeah. Watching it just, yeah, struggle makes it, yeah, that scene where he uh, intends to go and then uh, comes back and has never gone. Um, yeah, it, it, it reads to me that he's too afraid to see of what, what it's become because he loves loves it so much. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing that we worked on in Sundance, Munia. Yes. Um, so speaking of the blue eyes, I know that uh, in casting uh, Reem, that came into play. Um, and I find her casting so delightful and... Um, such a lovely little story as well. Um, for anyone watching this conversation who might not know, Reem is played by twin sisters. Um, Monia, could you tell me how you came to cast these two girls um, and how they sort of informed the character as well? Yes, of course. I'll show you their picture here. <laughs> oh, look at them. <laughs> Actually, like I, I, I met so many kids, and we were not finding Reem. You know, she's a little bit my alter ego. I really wanted also a Reem to be like a copy paste of 
Saleh and of Tala, Tala to resemble Nadine. And after seeing many kids one day, the casting director team at Ginger Beirut uh, showed me a video of this insane little, little kid like yelling at people, bossing people around and just feeling the energy of this kid in the iPhone video. Right away, I felt something in my stomach. Like, I think I found her. And at that moment, they told me, actually, there's two of them. They're twins. So we decided, I told them, we'll bring them both. I mean, it wasn't a purposeful decision for like working hours or anything like that. It was a total accident. I actually thought that I would meet them and find that one is more Reem than the other. But what happened is that when I met uh, Seana and Jayana, I felt like each of them had, they had never acted before. So it was really about getting to know them as, as people. And uh, Seana had this thing that Reem has that Jayana didn't and vice versa. Like Jayana is like Mowgli in Jungle Book. She's very in touch with her masculine side. Seana is like a, an eight-year-old empathetic person in the body of, a, of an eight-year-old. And so I analyzed their personalities, spent a lot of time with them, fell in love with them and divided the scenes based on their personalities. Yeah, it worked out so well. You truly, as an audience member, can't tell, uh, you know, yeah. uh, that there are two girls. Um, and yeah, the, the combination of both, like, leads to such a rich character uh, that is Reem. Um, and in talking about, like, stitching things together and stuff, I know um, I want to talk a little bit about the, the, the world you created um, for this film um, and what it was like acting in these spaces, some of which uh, didn't exist in, in the physical world. Um, but the part of the house that you filmed that was uh, owned by someone who lives in the same way that the family does in the film, right? Yes, when I was doing research, uh, one of the environmental activists that collaborated with us on the project told me, you should meet this guy, he lives in that same way. So when I went to meet this wonderful man, I fell in love with this space, but it didn't have a land in front of it and a pool and a valley. So we stitched together two homes uh, and, and also uh, a big part of the, the garbage landfill was done also in VFX. So it was a marriage between production design, VFX, stitching two houses together. And then uh, as soon as the actors entered the space, the whole space became what it is because, you know, they gave it life. Yeah. Um, and in thinking about that, like um, there are the couple scenes of sort of, um, of the, the fantastical scenes that you chose to include, the garbage that floats up into the sky, the window next to Nadine uh, that passes by. Um, I wanted to ask uh, about those scenes, why you chose to include them and what they mean in the story. Yes, I, it was important for me that um, each character gets a moment where we really dive into their subjectivity in a way that feels, you know, otherworldly and like the same way. Um, sorry, one second. Sorry, one second. <laughs> This is the costume designer and the line producer of, of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Hi. 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 Look at <laughs> that. A special <laughs> guest appearance. And so, uh, yes. So, <laughs> okay, bye. Go. <laughs> Hi. 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 So actually Beatrice created the costumes with us and uh, she, I mean, what she, what she was also a part of this decision to create a self-sustainable home. So even with the wardrobe, it was all about the circular economy and uh, Nadine wearing the clothes of Saleh and the kids, everyone is exchanging each other's clothes because these people have been away for so many years and, and have a different relationship to objects and, and clothes. But about the the magical realism scenes. I really wanted each character to get one of those scenes. Growing up, uh, I think that because of the situation sometime of the country, I, ha I spent a lot of time at home. So my window was my access to the world. And so I became a very imaginative child because of my relationship to cinema and, and to just looking outside. 
And so I wanted to create scenes in which there is no bridge between the place we're in and, and the place inside our mind. And so I wrote one scene like this for each character. And for Nadine, it was that moment of connection with her kids and with her past life and her uh, career as a woman and that moment of nostalgia. And for Saleh, it was that moment of profound grief and sadness in which he saw his wish becoming a reality with the garbage transforming into flying lanterns going into the sky. Those are such incredibly moving scenes and, and for the characters obviously are very emotional scenes. Um, Salah and Nadine, how, how uh, as an actor do you find uh, the emotions to bring to these scenes where you can't see uh, what's, what's, uh, what we can see happening in front of you? How, how do you get into that headspace? And is it difficult? Um, I think uh, I'm going to talk about my experience in that film. The fact that I identified so well with uh, Suraya ma made it uh, made it very instinctive and very mm -hmm. natural for me to be her. Uh, I just identified with her so so much that uh, I think I started, um, you know, relating related relating to my own situation related relating to the the um this almost you know i was living at that moment still am now uh, mm -hmm. almost in a, in a in a similar situation we live now you know in the middle of a forest like as you see in a in, in a cabin yeah. uh, we are living like this now in the uh, during the summer, um, but when we were shooting the film, it was actually our home because it was during COVID and uh, we were completely, you know, conf okay, they we're in complete uh, lockdown. So mm -hmm. it was actually very similar to what I was living in the film. So I, the fact that I, I and identified so well with it made it really very natural and instinctive. Mm -hmm. I don't recall preparing for it, but just, you know, feeling it with the moment. And also the fact that, you know, this close relationship with Munya and the fact that we mm -hmm. spoke about uh, Suraya so well before and and uh, we kept uh, also um, you know, sharing ideas and talking about it. I felt I knew, I knew her very well, so it wasn't very difficult to prepare. Yeah. And what about you, Salah? How did you bring all those for emotions up for your scene? Sorry. Yeah, for me, the difficulty was not the emotions. The emotions is there, the experience, the pain, mm -hmm. uh, the longing, uh, the, the determination of the character, the it was there and also it helped that i worked with amazing amazing talented people that just inspire you and and challenge you to be to be the best you can you can do uh, uh, talking about nadine and the the, the two little uh, uh, sisters amazing amazing work just helped me to be to be to be as the best I, uh, to to be the best I could, and the, the, the difficulty was was technical for me. It was uh, it was the the language only the the to get the accent and to work on the accent because it's not my natural accent. So so I had to work on the accent for for a long time. So to 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 do it uh, to do it uh, perfectly and uh, I, I think I I I wasn't the safe. I, I could arrive to the safe zone, uh, like regarding this technical issue. But uh, despite that, like I, I totally identify with with what Nadine said. I just felt it's natural and and instinctive and intuitive. Uh, yeah, it's all there. It's all in me. I, I, I lost. I lost cities. Not one city. We lost all our cities in Palestine. Uh, all our cities were, were totally or mostly destroyed and, and displaced. And the longing, the longing 
to a city is 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 is, is in me the pain the the wound is so big inside me it's a city it's a city a city is where a nation live a city is where the nation um, uh, flourish and the culture flourish and everything lives you know um, and it's our um, our uh, civilized face that was that was um, just destroyed destroyed we were um, um, uh, we were not we didn't have the privilege like me my 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 generation didn't have the privilege the privilege to live the palestinian city so for me beirut is 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 yafa mm -hmm. it reminds me of yafa it reminds me of of haifa it reminds me of my city and it, it reminds me of my pain of my longing you know so so it was yeah it's it just is here inside I, I i i i don't get it from anywhere else I, i'm mm -hmm. i didn't feel i'm flying to somewhere very far from my own space it's just you know the same it's the for me the, there is no border for me it's the same geographical uh, cu uh, cultural uh, line uh, there is no i don't distinct between the lebanese and uh, the lebanese and the palestinian as as people for me it's the same the same people it's, 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 uh, yeah. I, I don't feel stranger in beirut or in mm -hmm. lebanon i don't feel stranger so yeah that's good. That was really beautiful. Um, thank you for sh for sharing all of that. Um, I know we're running a little bit uh, tight on time and that it's late um, for all of you. So before we wrap up, um, I just want to ask, um, you know, this we're recording this uh, in line with the release of the film in the United States. Um, I was with Monia during the uh, opening night and we, you know, saw a lot of Lebanese and Arab folks and heard their feelings on the film. Um, but the hope is a lot of non-Lebanese and non-Arab and, you know, folks will see the film. Um, what do you hope that they take away from this or what do you hope that they learn about um, our culture or our lives or our situation um, from a film like this? I think there's a lot to learn. So what do you hope that they take away? Oh, uh, Monia, I think you're on mute. No, I was saying my wish is that they enjoy spending this moment with this family, these people. I think ultimately this is the story of a family that tries to figure out how to, you know, um, keep it together in, in a world that feels toxic. For me, making this film was trying to confront my own demons. Like, what do you do when you feel like the world has become suffocating and oppressive? And what's your responsibility towards the people you love, towards your society? So my hope is that they just, you know, enjoy that moment spent with that family and that hopefully it can trigger questions and conversations between different cultures as well. Mm -hmm. I love that. Do uh Either of you have anything you'd like to, to add to that thought? I hope uh, we left a good trace for people, for others, for, for the people who are living now, for the people to come, for our children, grandchildren, to see where, where they were so they can maybe fix things or they can appreciate maybe their their life in the future more. I hope, you know, I hope we left a good trace that can affect people and can leave something 
somewhere in their hearts. I hope that we can inspire decent uh, people who, can, who, who, who have the capacity and the ability to change. Yeah, that's lovely. I hope so too. Anything you'd like to add, Nadine? Um, you know, I, I see this film, uh, I felt it as a, as a tribute to every person who is living this dilemma, especially the Lebanese people today, mm -hmm. uh, with this dilemma of whether they should stay and, and be, resist and be part of the change with everything that's been going on. Mm -hmm. um, and the political situation and the economic situation. So I, f I felt this film as a tribute to them, really. To the, uh, this, this, the, these, every Lebanese person who has left the country is feeling the exact same, mm -hmm. um, you know, struggle. Uh, do we go back and be part of the change and, and try to resist as much as we can? Or do we choose... Uh, maybe to save our ourselves and save our families and save our children and and move away and go to a different place and try to um, uh, build a new life so I, I I felt this film as a tribute to every Lebanese person and it's also a tribute to every person who is going through this dilemma today whether should we stay or should we go? Should we stay and be part of the change no matter what? Or should we mm -hmm. isolate ourselves and decide to just um, save ourselves and, and live in our bubble and, um, and live in a more introvert uh, uh, system and, and create our system that is outside of the system or live in a parallel system what is the right decision really mm -hmm. and like Munya and Saleh said uh, this film does trigger those kind of questions and and I think it's very important now I feel like there's a we're 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 in a transition there's a certain shift that is happening and I think we we, we really all feel it mm -hmm. uh, so I think this film raises those kinds of questions and it's important that we that we ask them yeah i agree and i i as i kind of said before i think the story even though it is distinctly uh lebanese in many ways is extremely relatable especially in this moment when we're seeing so many changes and so many difficult situations around the world um and I think with that, uh, we'll, we'll wrap up this conversation so I don't keep you all too late. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and answer my questions. And thank you all for making this beautiful film and sharing it with all of us. Um, it's, yeah, it's been a joy and an honor. And I hope one day we can all, I can meet all of you in person. <laughs> no, thank you so much. It's been, thank I you. love uh, with you in New York. It's been really nice to see how different audiences and different cultures relate to the film for different reasons. And I've learned a lot from those encounters. So I'm excited that the film will meet new audiences again. Yeah. Thank you so much. And uh, Munya and Saleh, I, I miss you both really very, very much. I'll see you soon. And, and Saleh, I, I hope to see you here in Beirut sometime <laughs> soon. And I will so. see Munia soon. <laughs> All right. Oh, Thank you so, so nice. much, Yasmin. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank Bye. you so much. <laughs>